I'm Betsy and I'm from the ABCA. Welcome to Rotation Optimization and Unique Systems, Quick Ways to Increase Points. Before we begin, I have just a few notes. This is session number 72. Last sessions of the day, guys, we made it. <laughs> Again, session number 72, please fill out those evaluation forms. Please turn off your cell phones and pagers. This presentation is being audio recorded, and the recording will be available on the ABCA website approximately three or four weeks after the convention. I now have the pleasure of introducing today's speaker, Kyle Mishima from Woodside High School and Rotate 123. Complete biographical information can be found in the convention program. Please join me in welcoming Kyle. Thank you. Uh, thanks for hanging around. I guess we got the match tonight's a little bit of incentive to take a break in here and look at something. Uh, before we get started, let's talk a little bit about your background. How many of you are at college? Wow, okay. High school and club. Middle school. Okay, thanks. Uh, how many of you uh, know Rotate123? Okay. Uh, how many of you have attended an optimization seminar? I've done a few webinars too, so just uh, okay, good. And then, how many of you saw the article in Volleyball Magazine this summer? Okay, wow, great. I'm going to try not to repeat the material. Uh, a lot of this is actually available on the Rotate 123 website, um, but you should know that uh, I'm a coach first, and this happened. Uh, the software happened as a result of many hours of late nights and paper and getting very frustrated and also being 
part of the software industry felt a little bad that somebody else hadn't already done this. So we, my partner and I just kind of went ahead and dealt with it. Okay, so what is rotation optimization? It's a bunch of things, right? So, you know, you've got to get the uh, best performance by selecting, you know, right players, you know, right roles, locations, formations, timing, right? There's a lot of factors here. It's very complicated because volleyball has enough aspects of the rule that makes it very tricky, okay? So trying to get all these things to work out right is a complicated problem. So, you know, I believe that uh, if you haven't done much with it, it's understandable. So the reason why it matters is that it's very hard to improve skills quickly, right? You want your outside hitter to be the dominating hitter in the league, and it ain't going to happen this year, okay? But it's a lot easier to move people to the right place. It's a lot easier to pick the right people for the right formations, right? It doesn't take a long time. The problem is that, you know, we have fairly standardized formations, so if you plan a 5-1, you're typically supposed to have your outside hitters be great passers, and your libero is a great passer who subs for the middle blockers. It's wonderful if things work out that way, and most times it doesn't. Because a lot of times you're in a situation where in high school you get what you get. And you need to try to get the best athletes possible and then you try to figure out how to optimize that, that situation. <coughs> the issue though is that how many games do you lose by 25-21? Right? Anything that's close is kind of in that area. Okay? And the problem is that with, with rally scoring it's really only two points, not four. Right, because it's a little bit of an exchange. You know, you get one, I don't get one. It gets kind of hard that way. So those those exchanges are very, very sort of stiff penalties. Reducing a couple of errors can make the difference between winning and losing. You can take those 50-50 shots and tilt them in your favor. Right? There's kind of a two percent rule about small things have big results, and if you can improve by two percent, you can actually jump your win record by about thirty percent. So it's a big deal, and it's all kind of statistical, mathematical stuff. Now, why is it not done most of the time? A lot of reasons. The first one is the reason that really prevented me, which is it's really tedious to go through this thing carefully and try to get it all mapped out, and then try to communicate it to the team. That's the kind of whole other level, right? So I tried all kinds of different methods, and uh, you know, it's painful. The other thing is that there's a whole bunch of standards, and you're really used to those standards, so you know you got it wired in your head, and you just want to kind of bolt everybody into those slots. Right? And it just reduces errors because guess what? You get a little bit out of standard and then right in the middle of the game, it's like, oh, the sub, I forgot the sub, you know? Those kinds of things happen, right? There's so much that you have to take care of in game that one more thing to worry about is tough and you don't want to make some silly error, okay? It costs a point that way because you're kind of undoing all the work that you did. The final one is that it's a little bit of a creativity <coughs> kind of problem where you really don't have kind of the insights or the inspiration to come up with something new. And volleyball rotations are actually pretty interesting in that there's lots of room to do things that are a little crazy. And it's just kind of your imagination and then understanding the rules. The combination of those two give you tremendous flexibility. Now, you know, we're gonna build for, you know, foundations. I think you've done enough seminar work over the last couple days to hear all this stuff, right? You gotta get the receive right. Right? Otherwise, setter can't do the job, you're going to set her close to where they need to be so they're not running all over the court to, to set the ball. And then you want to get, you know, get the ball to the best hitters. Okay. Defense, same stuff, right? You got to really serve tough. Oops, sorry. Right? You know, set up a good block, get your diggers lined up. Say, all these things have to happen, and it's very complicated to get it all right. Now, this whole seminar is not necessarily about answers, it's about process. Okay, so how do you want to think about the problem? And I'm hoping to be able to impart a little bit of what I've learned and maybe be helpful to you as, as a way to think about it so that you might actually discover new things. And I'd love to hear from you actually, you know, kind of cool things that you've done because uh, it helps me learn and I think it's great to share. First part, you want to rank and assign uh, positions. And I'll show you that in a second. You want to prioritize your objectives, right? Pick some basic offensive defensive structures, select some subs. Adjust each rotation, customize a little bit, right? And then review and evaluate it, check it out on the court, okay? And then go back, look at it again, and say, can I do better, right? So the first part of the process, rank and evaluate the players. You can use any kind of scale you want, okay? So I use an ABCD scale since a lot of high school stuff going on, <coughs> right? 
So you want to go carefully through and rank everybody's skill. Now, there's one key about this system. Whether you use 1 to 10 or whatever, do it on a curve. Okay? So your best hitter is an A or an A+. Plus. It's not about she's not the best hitter in the league. It doesn't matter. You're on your side of the court. Right? Your best hitter gets an A or an A+. Plus. Okay. And then the other part of this is we tend to pigeonhole people very, very quickly. You know, kind of stay loose in the early parts of the season and really try and let people do stuff and find out things. I found all kinds of stuff in my high school, and it was just amazing. Uh, so that you know, you can actually have some flexibility because as you start bringing things together, you may find that there's an opportunity here that, that you just don't see because you pigeonhole that short person as your libero or the tall person as your little walker or something like that. Now, this is a, kind of an eye chart, but it's almost real. And uh, what you have across the top, first, the player, we play our names, we're keeping the players hidden, just the numbers right now. Right? Second one, I just did the high thing just for you know, your sake, so you get a sense for like how big are the players. Uh, third thing, positions are blank right now, we'll kind of work through this thing and decide where they should play. Now we got passing, we got hitting on the outside. I used to say about hitting column, but rea the reality is hitting outside and middle are very, very different. Same thing applies for blocking. Blocking outside of the middle are very, very different, right? So I want to really look at this thing carefully, okay? Setting, same thing, right? Go, go down to the list, dating, serve. You can add as many columns as you like. The other part is about kind of making little notes to yourself, okay? This chart is actually pretty hard to fill out, you know, because I just went through this, you know, a couple weeks ago. And it was like, gee, I really don't know about this particular skill for this person because I've never seen her set, right? So let's do some setting drills just to see. Find out, right? Because you might have some surprises. Okay? So you want to be kind of thorough with this process, um, and really it will help you kind of grade people. Now, note about ranking. Um, you want to be thorough about this, and you can guess initially, but as you go forward, really try to figure out some quantitative measures. Right? Statting is a good thing to do. Okay? Statting at practice is something that you, know, you should try to do as much of as, as you can. I actually run a video camera at practice and afterwards kind of look, look over and try to review things that are going on because I can't see that and still coach at the same time. The last part of this thing, you know, everybody have gone to Moneyball the movie, read the book, how many of you are really familiar with Moneyball? Everybody? Right? So Moneyball is kind of the mantra for uh, USA Volleyball all cap training, right? It's all about stats. And the, and the core phrase is, really if you distill it down, the eyes lie. Okay? Because you tend to want to see things the way you want to see it. And typically, the great athletic looking player tends to get more plus points than the non athletic looking player. And your brain just distorts the facts. And when you start statting this stuff, you find out that, hmm, that other person is actually putting up better passes, making less errors. But the other person, the athletic person, looks really dynamic. Right? Well, they're doing whatever they're doing. They say, look really great, you know, kind of diving after balls and all this kind of thing. The other player, reads well, so they're not doing anything. They're just standing and a ball's coming to them. Kind of reminds you of, you know, playing old guys in uh, uh, handball or, you know, that kind of thing where they're not moving at all. Standing right in the middle of the court and ball's coming to them magically. Okay? So, really important to, to do some static. Key considerations. Now, all these things start to become almost contradictory, but you want to get, you know, your best batch in the court at all times, right? You want your best servers in early rotation. At lower levels, again, at college is less so the case, but at lower levels, you don't go through that many rotations before you actually end the, uh, the game. Okay? So you want to stack the first three rotations more so than later. Okay? You get your best servers out early, get your best hitter, setter combos, right? you want to get your defenders out there all times. And then try to get your setters close to where they need to, to set from so that they're not running all over the place. Right? And then try to minimize by the impact of weak players by hiding them. All right, so in this particular example, you know, here's some notes about the team. Uh, have one great thing going on. The two setters are very fast. They get the balls, right? And they got good hands, so they're able to get to the ball and put it up. So that's the big plus for this team, right? We need to find three or four good passers to stabilize the receive, because we don't do that, we don't stay in the game, okay? And so the problem, though, that follows from that is our best passers are also our best servers. So if I make one a libero in club, I'm stuck with that, losing that person as a server. Right? So we've got to figure out how to optimize that situation. And then, you know, we need as much 
offense is possible because we don't have a dominating single hitter. Right? There's no go-to person on the team. It's kind of distributed. We've got to move the ball around once and what. And I think that because it's not a particularly tall team, it's okay height, it's not short, but it's not particularly tall that uh, we need to really be able to play some defense and to set up our offense. Okay? So those are kind of the overall parameters. So the right side, I sort of distilled that down. Now, these are important things right, for you to do and to write down to really think about and make sure you checklist this so that you don't start changing your rules halfway through and compromising things and thinking, oh, I mean, this is better. And it's really not better because you just sort of took something away from here and moved it over there. So the highlighted area is trying to pick out kind of who the top people are, right? So I've got number one, two, and three, you know, H1, H2. H3 looks like maybe Libero possible. Very, very good passer. The best passer on the team by a lot. She's better by about somewhere between two tenths and three tenths, right? So she's substantially better. Her error rates are substantially lower, right? Kind of in the sub 10% range where the others are more closer to 20% error rate, okay? So these are all stats that we've taken in practice times so and we really, really kind of understand all this stuff. The funny thing is the two, well, the number one and number two people were actually middle blockers when they were recruited. And lucky for me, they can pass because my DSs aren't doing very well passing for some reason. They're not passing as well as tryouts. I don't know why. Okay? But I'm dealing with the reality of the numbers. So we got a couple of girls who uh, are good for middle blocking. They have good middle hit capabilities and they're, and they're decent laterally. They block pretty well. And then we got our two setters. One of the two is a little bit better. But the other girl, the number nine there, is very, very athletic, able to cover a lot of court. And I like her energy on the court, tremendously aggressive. I'd love to have her playing a little bit harder. Okay. okay, so what are the options? Well, you got the standard list of the possibilities, right? So if we do uh, you know, the standard 5-1 with libero, and I use my H3 as a libero, the problem is I lose her as a server, but she's also the third best outside hitter on the team. Okay. If I use the S2 as a libero, she's not as good a passer, if I use it in the standard way. But she's a good defender and really great to have on the court. So a couple of other options. At the bottom, we've got a 6-2 option. The middle one's interesting for me because it's like, well, maybe we'll make our H3 an opposite and figure out how to get her to pass every rotation. Okay. So with that, let's, uh, we'll jump out of this and we'll go to rotate 1, 2, 3. So you should know, this is not a like, presentation of our Rotate 1, 2, 3. This is Rotate 1, 2, 3 is my mind, it's just a tool. And it, it helps you because it sort of accelerates the process. And so you don't have to be doing lots of paperwork, which is why we created the product in the first place. So what I just did was uh, I selected, I kind of went too fast there. On the bottom, there were a set of uh, standard formations. I picked 5, 1. Okay? And I also pulled up a roster from the existing plan, so I don't have to retype it. And these roster names don't mean much because, you know, just kind of late. All right. So you can type in your roster here. Now, one thing you should really know that if you're at the high school level, uh, it's important. The third column is actually the most important column. The three letters you get for initials allows you to personalize every single rotational game plan that you have. And what I found consistently is when I tell a girl you're H1, she looks at me like, huh? But if her initials are on that little bubble, it becomes very personal, and it's like, okay, I know what that is, right? I'm rotation two, I'm on the right side over there. Right? It really helps that learning process by making it personal. All right, so the next tab up here is the position space. Now, it starts out with a 5-1 in rotation one, so I'm just going to draw players in, in sort of the obvious slots here, just drag them in like this. Okay? And I'm going to stick my uh, H3 into the opposite slot. I don't need her. I need uh, M1 and 2. And then we're going to use her as a setter. And then we're going to use the second setter as a libero. And we're going to make two uh, sub options here. So we're going to go to M1, M2, and M1. And we're done. Now we're ready to go and do some work. All right? The rotation wheel has been generated. Okay? It's all ready to go. And let's go to the place where it matters the most, the hardest part to get right is the receive. All right? Now they're all rotated and ready to go. And we want to, to use something pretty standard. So I'm going to start out with the standard. Oh, sorry, I'm in the wrong place. Okay. And we'll go into three person. Okay, so we're already ready to go. Now we can start customizing, right? Because the system has generated all the rotations, so you don't have to sit there and go spin players. Not only do you not have to spin players, we give you a little bit of template, so we give you a head start here. Okay. 
Okay, so you can really get going now and start doing things to make this thing work right. All right, number one, Libero is not the best passer. She's probably the fourth or fifth best passer, so we're going to move her all the way. And we're going to bring her opposite back. All right, rotation one's taken care of. One, two, three, best passer. All right, rotation two, opposite's up here. I need to move her back into the passing lane, but what? What's that? That's an overlap, right? So in the system, it's like a spelling checker. You cannot make illegal rotations. It helps me a lot because late at night when I'm getting blurry, magical rotations appear. And in the morning, they disappear. <laughs> right. The unicorn or whatever. OK. So since the tooth fairy doesn't help us here, we're going to bring uh, the setter back. And we'll bring the opposite back. The setter will release from here up to here. And now, if you look at the attack patterns, that's kind of gnarly, right? It's not going to, you know, I don't know if I'm going to do that. Okay. So we're going to just say, let's be a little conservative here. We'll, we'll just let the opposite maybe hit, hit a two out of the middle just for here. Let's say 